Okay, so in the sequence of activities, we'll take up plate and section <laughs> forming because uh, we did uh, we talked about in brief about the plate cutting. So once the plates are cut to the required sizes, they maybe there will be requirement to shape it means bend it to the required to so that it conforms to the hull form. Well, depending on uh, suppose you are making uh, cutting a plate for uh, fabricating a bulkhead, a flat plate bulkhead, then naturally question of shaping or forming does not arise. But if the plate forms part of the say part of the bow, part of the bow, a plate here, for example, this particular plate will have a curvature in this direction means in the horizontal plane also we will have a curvature in the vertical direction that means if this is my lines plan in the vertical direction also it will have some curvature all right so that way plates need to be bent wherever there is a curved form is coming similarly once you have the plate you have to bend uh, at the same time the sections or the frames need to be bent because if we look into the frame plan, I mean you may have done body plan. Now, if the same body plan if we do not draw for each frame, right, at different frames, then you may have something like this. So, there if, if, if this side shell is stiffened with a say a side shell frame, so the frame also needs to sort of follow this curve, is not it? That means the frame has to be bent, right. And these here the plates, uh, well the shell, shell plate and these frames can be angle section or T or, <coughs> or, or bulb sections, right. So they need to be bent. So as you see in the sequence of activities, right from the after the plates have been cut they may go straight for uh, so called fabrication of sub assemblies where there is no bending required for example the plate floor it straight away goes for sub assembly means the floor plate with struts welded to it or the bulkhead it goes for the bulkhead panels i mean all individual plates are welded then the frames are welded stiffeners but if it is the stern part of the uh, ship or the what you call the bilge plate or the forward part you have to bend them. So we have so called plate bending as well as frame bending is needed. How they are done? They can be either by some mechanical means or by some thermal means. Means for bending you need to apply a force such that it develops a stress level beyond the elastic limit of the material and thereby you achieve a permanent deformation and that is what is bending. So that force can be generated mechanically or thermally by thermal loading also I can generate this similar type of force or I may say similar type of bending moment such that I achieve the bend. So let us take the case of frame bending which is more uh, simple. So, frame bending means what? Basically frame it can be thought of as a beam right? and if I have some such uh, configuration and apply a force, so it bends right. That means two support and one support I am applying a force. Right? So, the same thing from this simple uh, configuration I can think of a machine wherein which uh, which can be schematically represented like this imagine this green ones I am drawing they are sort of uh, Move, movable ramps say the central one 
there is a central support mm. this is fixed and these two small ones they can move they can move means you can apply a force right and it can move in this direction and also can uh, it, it can move in that direction right <coughs> and well 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 it's a bit it is not correctly drawn let us draw the what do you call this is my flange because whenever I am using a frame it will be a, essentially it will be angle section or can be T section or can be bulb section right. So, you have the flange and this ram actually is resting against the flange the central one this is extended not not here this is extended and you suppose you apply this left and right ramps they are referred to as movable ram right. So, you apply the force what happens it will bend simply the frame will bend in this shape. right it will bend in this direction. So, what one will have to do is you will apply the force it bends <coughs> how much you should bend it right that that is what what uh, next will come, but this simple method is called three point bending and this is the simplest way you can do that means there is no heat applied in the cold condition you just put the frame on this fixed ram right on the central ram which is fixed clamp it properly on the machine that will be clamping and then the side ramps it pushes it this is basically hydraulically operated machine. So, it bends now suppose you need a bend shape say a frame is needed of this particular shape you know and the whole length could be say 8 meter, 6 meter, 10 meter can be I mean maximum could be probably 10 meter or so the length of the stiffener right. Here the spacing between the ramps could be 3 meter could be 2 meter depending on machine capacity but my frame length is much longer here I have drawn with a broken line that means it is still there much longer. So, what happens the sequence of operation is you put the frame fit to the machine give a bending release the load fit the beam again give a bending release it fit the beam bend it that means you will keep on feeding it and bending it. So, that gradually you approach the shape whether you are getting the shape or not because here we have the way I have drawn I have the flange in this side. So, that means my final edge which should conform to the hull form or the hull line is this particular edge is not it that edge will be this particular edge will be connected to the shell plate. <coughs> I am just arbitrarily thinking of some shape that means I should check whether this sh this this particular edge is uh, conforming to the shape or not. So, for checking that again a manual operation something called template something called template is made template is nothing but because once the hull form is designed you have the uh, frame plans that means offset table from the frame sections right. <coughs> so, based on that you make full scale templates full scale templates means either of aluminum bar right that means that you bend to that particular shape manually or from plywood you cut it in that shape right. So, that becomes a template means a standard that shape <coughs> is made of that. So, once this is being bent 
stage by stage that means you little bit you bend fit the frame further you bend so in between process you will put the template inside in this machine you will put the plate on top of it the template right to check whether it is taking the shape or not it's just a pure manual tedious process you little bit you bend put the template and check then you will know that how much to be fed in how much to be further pushed bent so it's a basically skill dependent means you me won't be able to do it will be able to do but that will take too much of time a skilled operator will have an idea that how to go about for a given shape he'll get it very fast very fast means also will take few hours so this is the simple bending operation so what we need here <coughs> what we need here is the parameters that means a frame bending machine right primary thing is what you need is a so called frame bending machine what is that machine made of what would be its parameters its capacity that means capacity in terms of how much of force it can apply that ramps how much of force it can apply they are generally of the order of there are frame bending machines can be of the order of 500 tons right or 700 tons like that that means that side ramps can apply a 700 tons of force it's a huge force why that is needed because you may need to bend heavy sections Right, the sections of dimension of 600 millimeter, say the wave height, thickness of 20 millimeter, heavy sections may need to be bent. So that means, essentially, how much capacity the machine should have, that will depend on because these machines you will not have many of them. You have only one probably frame bending machine. So one should know what is the product range you are going to produce. The shipyard is going to handle. So, depending on that product range, what range of stiffness you are going to bend in that. So, once you know that, you know the section dimensions of the stiffener, section modulus of the stiffener. Once you know the section modulus of the stiffener, suppose your stiffener, say big girders are to be bent like this, big T girders, where probably whatever be the heavy dimensions, right. <coughs> So, you know the section modulus of this, know what kind of steel will be used. So, depending on that, you can find out how much force is needed to get to the, to exceed the elastic limit across the entire section of the material, because when you bend it fully, then the overall, the whole section goes under plastic deformation. That means, elastic limit has to be exceeded. So, by that one can calculate how much would be the power needed of the machine. So, that is a question of when you decide about which kind of machine is to be procured. So, once you have the machine, then well, you know up to that much you can do it in this. Beyond that, well, some other method has to be followed. Right. So, that is, that is number one, that is the capacity, the power, how much it can give and another is the stroke length. Stroke length is the <coughs> that determines these side ramps how much it can move to what extent to what extent it can move because when it is bending it will go a certain extent right how much so that again limits the curvature what radius of curvature can be achieved anyway. So, these are basically two, two things, the capacity and the stroke length, right. Well, so that is what in very simple term a frame bending machine. Now, as I said to check this edge whether we are getting the correct edge or not, we use templates. Templates means again that means that is an additional job, that means some kind of frame bending already you are doing, but that you are doing with a very uh, softer material. So, what happens exactly is 
uh, there is something called mold loft right in the shipyard mold loft is where you do the expansion of the drawing expansion means shell expansion suppose you have to do shell expansion is nothing but your shell is a, a, a three dimensional plate that has that has to be expanded to a two dimension that is what is called shell expansion right in other words uh, these days this in more loft we do not do any more shell expansion because that is already done uh, with the help of uh, computer that means it is already done uh, by some so called numerical means right it has become easy but still a mold loft space that in mold loft what it, it used to be done is you draw the entire vessel in full scale that means it is a huge drawing hall right on the floor you draw it in the full scale because you need the full scale sizes the developed plate has to be in full scale then only you know what size and what shape of the plate is needed which when given the proper bending will fit to the hull form right so they are basically draw the frame lines put this aluminum thing and mild hammering you just make it conform to that shape or paint it over a plywood and cut it so that's how the templates are made so that is why that is that is a very crude and simple method but well there is not much variations available we'll talk about the variations so this is how this is done so in this process we see the as far as the productivity is concerned is very poor because uh, firstly these templates are to be made that's a additional job you have to preserve the template because suppose you have five ships in series you are building that means such frame five numbers will be needed over a span of probably 10 years if every ship takes 2 years on an average then 10 years so first for the first ship the template you have made you have to preserve it till the 10th year so well and these are not small thing that you keep it nicely in the cupboard will be big ones so keeping it storing it is difficult the, all the likelihood that the five times you will be making the template means those are non productive work but without that you cannot do so these are the this is the advantage of this machine that means it's very simple to operate it needs a skilled hand but disadvantage is you have to have a take help of such templates productivity is low slowly it will progress you overbend it then you can straighten it by reverse action by mistake you overbend it by reverse action you can straighten it right so that is how the frame bending is done now we can see one of the wastage is the template making the template so what could be the another method of doing it it is something like this say originally you have the frame i mean the beam which you are bending is a straight beam isn't it or the stiffener which will be bent to get that frame shape will be a straight one right so you draw the you draw the this edge that 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 shape what shape it is supposed to take that is drawn over the web that means from the frame plan suppose this edge from the fr frame plan i i know the shape of this curve that curve is drawn on the web of the frame which is to be bent now after i bend it what will happen that will become straight right so that is how so what is being done before we put the frame over the machine the frame bending machine i i i have the i have the curve drawn already i have 
of the curve drawn on the web and then go on bending it and go on observing that line whether it is becoming gradually straight because gradually I am feeding it and bending it. So, gradually I am getting the bend shape of the plate and in the process gradually that curved line oppositely curved is becoming straight. So, if that can be done properly then you do away with the template business one great unproductive work is reduced. So, but the curve may not always fit on the web. It has limitations, it has limitations, but many can be done because one of the advantages in ship building is the curves are generally of very, very gentle curve, very high radius of curvature, not very sharp curves you do not have, right. So, that, that will, this shape what I have drawn and if it has to this much of only wave depth, it cannot draw the curve, definitely not. So, while it is feasible, where, where the curve is very gentle and you have sufficient wave depth where that curve can fit, physically fit. So, there this method can be used and then you have some advantage of uh, cutting down on that non-productive work. Obviously, this is very easily said, but in real practice it becomes difficult that first the how do you draw it, okay you can draw, you have the uh, data, you, some, you have to plot it and draw it physically, draw with what, if you draw with chalk it will get erased. So, again quite a lot of work involvement is there, that means I am not totally doing away with the non-productive work with template. My point of saying this is that one can talk about something, one can design something sitting on a drawing board, but to actually have to see how we are implementing it, <coughs> whether that is adding some value or not, because this is very nicely said, but in real practice again it is not so easy and to make it effective then what, you will have to use some kind of uh, uh, ink which will not get erased in the process because you are <coughs> gradually feeding the plate in the machine and the machine will clamp the web when the bending operation will be done the web will be clamped clamped means there will be supports both i mean both top and bottom of the web and it will be bent so there will be rubbing taking place so this line will may get erased so, th those are problem, but still this could be one of the way. What could be the next uh, better option for this? Next better option would be something like this. Think of a situation that uh, you, you have the say the your frame is here, here what, what I have drawn schematically is the the frontal elevation of the machine, but in an absolute schematic form, it, this, this, is, this is my elevation. very simple elevation that means I am showing the central block, this is fixed, the top one it comes down vertically and holds the frame in position. These are, these are my uh, side blocks, side ramps, right. <coughs> this also comes down and holds the plate, clamps it and they can move in this direction because this is a front elevation, right. So, think of a si situation that if I could have installed some kind of a camera which can, which has an angle of vision of this much. So, what is being done is that when you are bending it, this camera captures the edge definition of the edge 
right that is processed and say this data comes to a so called cot or to a computer monitor well right say this green line i have drawn that is the it has been fed little bit and little bending has been done finally i'll have to achieve a bend shape of this much this is the one which is the as per the frame plan and this is after the first stroke first stroke of bending when the stroke was not there it was <coughs> straight initially with first stroke it has come like this with the second stroke it has come like this with the third stroke like this fourth stroke let us assume it has come almost same as this so what i am saying is this is my initial this is the little i have fed the thing little bending i have given this is further i have bent fourth one fifth one so by the fifth operation it is matching with that so i'll have a i can have a mechanism of putting this green curves move up and down this is continuously displayed at one end at the bottom that is the shape needed and these green <laughs> ones are being generated from the camera picture right so the fellow is sitting in a in front of a console is operating the ramps because you need not stand here you can sit in a comfortable room from where you will, you can just see the machine and you operate it looking at the computer terminal see every stroke how it is coming and if necessary you bring that green curve down and superimpose on the on on the, on this curve and see whether it is matching or there is a deviation depending on the deviation you go on operating this that could be one way by which you totally do away with the problem of template do away with the drawing of it on the web plate and it becomes somewhat a semi automatic process somewhat a semi automatic process means well fitting of the thing will remain manual manual means it's not fully manual there will be uh, mounted on roller conveyors <coughs> such that by actuating the roller conveyor sitting whoever is operating the machine you you actuate the roller conveyor the frame gets fed right it moves in so depending on the direction of rotation it will go from right to left or left to right whatever <coughs> so that could be another solution of this frame bending that you can have somewhat reduce the non productive time that is making template bringing the template putting it and checking it you see that also not only non productive time of producing the template the trouble of storing it and the trouble of using it using means what two persons will be needed that means one fellow will be operating the machine two persons will be maneuvering the template <coughs> because it will be huge one two fellows will be holding from two ends so three people are needed to bend one frame so these all adds to cost if a, if one can do this ca camera stuff or if one can do this drawing the curve on the this thing once it is drawn then a single operator of the machine can do the job but it has its own difficulties and limitations if i have a camera kind of a system then a fellow sits in a more work uh, well better work environment right and do the job single handed almost single handed just initially probably you need some help of somebody to fit the initial positioning of the frame and then it goes single handed so this could be one solution wherein you can do the frame bending somewhat more effectively but again what are the disadvantages 
prime disadvantage is to locate this camera such that it gets the clear picture of the edge because here as I have said this particular here it will clamp <coughs> on the web on the web plate. So, it is already so much is blocked only this part is visible only this part this small arrows I have drawn probably those part are only exposed to the camera view. So, one can take only that much picture from that one have to extrapolate and see whether it is matching or not. So, all these will be difficulties that means camera will not have a clear view of the frame continuously because in this I will have to have somewhat continuously the clear view it should get that is number one difficulty that is physical location of the camera such that it can see the edge which we are monitoring. Number two difficulty would be if it is an ordinary camera digital camera it will see everything <coughs> it will not only see the edge it will see everything that means huge amount of pixel or picture information will be stored. So, you have to process that filter it out you need only this line the edge I am not interested in other. So, it may call for a huge image processing capacity which may lead to a difficulty in having developing a system which can do it online because this has to be done online Once it sees immediately it is there. The whole picture if I bring it here like in camera I see that is of no use I need that line. So, from this extract that useful information has to be online business that convert transformation that computation from the picture pixel what I am getting just that frame line that should be online it should be able to do immediately processing. So, there can be a problem of so called image processing thereby the capacity of the computers <laughs> being used. So, this is how we do it these are these are the possible ways of frame bending in a mechanical method. So, till now well that first one is used means you manually bend it you have templates <coughs> that is most widely used because all these are looks nice, but not yet so comfortably it could be implemented. One can think of if a better algor algorithm to s solve that problem of image or some other kind of uh, pixelization wherein I do not have uh, I, I have some kind of monitoring the edge like using a laser beam. So, I scan that edge only with a laser beam. So, I have only small information, but again all that easy to say that I will scan, but where you are using that half the things will be covered you will not get to see that. So, all these uh, different problems are there. As far as this frame bending is concerned then we talked about there can be methods of mechanical uh, bending and uh, thermal bending. Right. So, maybe in the same context we go for the thermal bending. or maybe thermal bending will take it later because uh, will let, let us talk about the mechanical one only. Uh, so, that is what is three point <coughs> mechanical bending of frames. Now, similar thing for plate in frame it was easy it was a two dimensional case. So, a literally three point support I mean uh, one central support two side ramps moving you could bend the frames. Now, when it is a question of a plate. So, what happens a plate is there this probably is the so called developed two dimensional developed shape right. From this you will get the curved section right that means essentially this is the uh, uh, shape which can be referred to as patch because this is a patch on the hull surface right. 
definition of this we know because once the hull surface has been uh, uh, defined or the hull development has been done, the lines plan has been done. So, you have all the information of the hull surface and there also after <coughs> doing the lines plan you have to work on the seam and butt lines that is there that means where the seam lines will go and where the butt lines will come. So, that is means say on a profile this is my profile and um, well if I see at a ship we will see some lines like this these are my welding lines is not it such lines will be seen. these are welding lines there will be several of them depending on the height of the uh, ship depending on the plate we are using that it is width right there are the seam lines and also we will see vertical lines various kinds of vertical lines in fact these now the lines we are drawing they are not bulkheads or any such thing that the let us assume that we have <coughs> this particular symbol right that refers to a welding line that welding line could be either a butt line or could be a seam line seam and butt that essentially the same thing but the difference is seam when it is in the longitudinal direction it is referred to as seam, when it is transverse we refer to as butt, but otherwise both both are essentially a butt joint that means two plates put like this and welded right. So, here what I have drawn now is I have shown some schematic seam lines and certain butt lines that butt lines are coming horizon vertically down that means we have assumed that I have we have built the vessel in blocks say this is my number 1 block this is number 2 number 3 4 and 5 blocks blocks means the say the number 3 block is nothing but a essentially a block like this right right so in this fashion th they have been built so this is my number 3 block so once the number 2 block is ready you put it here right and it is all round welded so that's how i have a one welding line right in between the blocks again you will have many this well this sim, sim lines and also various butt lines here you may see the butt lines may be staggered they are not bricks they are the welding lines <coughs> only thing what we have done we have staggered it that means say this is my number one plate number two number three four five six seven so many right so number one and number two are welded then this is welded to plate three this is welded to plate four then seven and what is that four five six six five and six are welded welded to seven and then the whole thing is welded here or in other words we draw a bigger picture a part of the plate here we are drawing So, these are my various same lines. What I mean to say, this will be full all, all over the ship. And one thing, these welding lines, these seam lines, whatever seam line I am drawing here, that should match with the next block also. 
or in other words the seam lines also should be smooth you cannot have one line here then another gap again no they should go smooth others plates will not match in any case we came to all these from that word patch so what is this patch it's nothing but this is essentially my seam lines that means one piece say for example plate number 10 the way i have drawn this plate number 10 i have said that it's a block 3 plate number 10 that is one patch one patch on the hull surface one piece of plate that plate number 10 is one piece and as i can see it will be very likely it will be just a rectangular plate so you have nothing to do only thing you have to cut it only thing you should know what is its dimension right and you have to cut it out from those standard flat plates 10 meter by 2 meter plate you have suppose this particular patch patch number 10 has a dimension of 6 meter by 3.5 meter sorry 1.5 meter say so there is nothing it's simple it is put on a flat plate 6 meter 1.5 meter cut it out you have the patch but think of a patch here in the block 5 right that may be something like this in the block 5 a patch a patch of the plate that means here also I will have all kinds of this sim lines butt lines and all that right so one piece there if you take out it may be like this means a curved plate so that is what is called patch here this is my patch it's a flat there is no no further operation needed that means i do not need to develop it here it has to be developed means means from here i have to first get this shape this is plate development this is known this shape is known because I know the hull form from that I do this development plate development you know you have a cone you have done in engineering drawing plates plate development you open up the cone what you are basically drawing you are opening it up yeah if a cone is developed how, how it looks like yeah the first term is opened it will be something like this you roll it you get the first term right a truncated cone right can you develop a football football volleyball basketball can you develop yes or no no you cannot if you closely take a look at those balls what it is made of a pentagonal patches are there huh? a pentagonal generally pentagonal patches are there these day i don't, don't know maybe also hexagonal patches are also there whatever some patches are there if you take a even a closer look those patches are essentially flat so how do you get a smooth uh, spherical curvature how do you get <coughs> at the joints they are like this the knuckles are there sort of that means that's why you have a blood at there you go on pumping it what you are basically doing <laughs> because of pascal you are getting uniformly forces everywhere right so at a certain stage you will find it has become just taut means this these uh, knuckles will be visible knuckle mean where two flat sections meet flat surfaces meet this is one patch this is another patch those pentagonal hexagonal patch right this will be go on increasing the pressure slowly you will find this is no more visible it has truly become a perfect sphere 
what has happened? It has stretched. That means you have built some stress, strain inside. You have stressed the, those le that leather. It has been stretched and you got the developed surface. So, a non-dimensional, <coughs> sorry, non-developable surface, right? If you want to develop, you will have to impart a strain in it. You will have to stretch it, then only it will be developed, right? But a developable surface, you need not put any strain, a cylinder, there is a cylinder. It is developed, a rectangular piece of plate. It is just rolled, you get a, get the cylinder. I have not put any strain in the plate. That means, the circumference of the plate, a, this section, cross section, right, will be equal to the length of the plate. But, the circumference of the football will not be equal, there will be more. If you really cut the thing and put it flat, it will be less. So, a bit of stretching is needed. So, that is how we come to the concept of Gaussian curvature, non-Gaussian curvature. Details you will learn later, when you learn about more about surface geometry, right. A non-Gaussian curvature is non-developable, right. Anyway, those things we will learn. We will not go in those now. So, this patch I have purposely drawn, which is a non-developable surface, means having, or in other words, we say a plate having double curvature. Double curvature means in x, y plane there is a curvature and also in x, z plane, say there is a curvature. x, let us assume x is the, along the length of the ship, y is along the breadth, z is along the depth. So, what is happening? X y is the water plane, right. So, in the X y you have the water planes like this, is not it? The, 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 the water planes they come like this, there is curvature. If you cut the water planes at, at with a horizontal plane along the depth, there is a curvature. The frame planes are the vertical sections. They are essentially y z planes, the vertical sections, they are, they are the y z planes, that means the section here, right, whatever x z plane or anyway, that means basically the frame planes, right. So, they are coming like this. So, it is curved in this plane and curved in the horizontal plane also. <coughs> so, the plate is doubly curved. That is what we say that it, there is a double curvature in it. Like roughly I have tried to draw here, it is curved in this plane, also curved in this plane. So, whenever you have a double curved plate, that is also have the, that also has the same problem of, it becomes a non-Gaussian curvature and it is it cannot be developed easily. <coughs> developed means developed to two dimension. So, this is what I have to go for a plate development process. That means a certain kind of strain has to be uh, taken out. In this case, as if the strain is taken out, then it becomes a two dimensional shape. So, this is my 3D patch, and this is my 2D, this is referred to as blank, two dimensional blank. This two dimensional blank I will cut out from my rectangular standard plate and then put the required strain, subjected to the required strain, I get the patch, right. So, plate development is a little complicated. I will have to get to know first the blank, I will have to get it properly. So, that is what is to be done in so called shell development, shell expansion, 
in a by the work of cell expansion in mole loft. These days things are a little easier, you have all kinds of softwares through which once you know the 3D patch, the geometry it can be done, 2D blank is obtained. But now how to apply that strain or how to, if it is a developable surface, say the bilge plate, it is not much of a problem. Bilge plate, suppose this is my bilge plate and bilge plate is generally is of a radius of curvature, that means what a part of a cylinder. So, bending of such things are easy, that is done by passing the plate through roller. In the first stage, we have passed plate through rollers to straighten it, now we are passing it through rollers to bend it. So, there will be difference in the roller arrangement. Now, it will be like this. For straightening, we have seen 5 roller machine, we have seen 22 roller machine. Here it will be only 3 roller machine, 2 in the uh, on the lower level, 1 at the top. So, you will apply the force, they will rotate in this fashion. Right? So, as you fit the plate, depending on the gap between the top roller and the bottom roller and the diameter of the top roller, this is important, diameter of the top roller, you will achieve the radius of curvature of the curved plate of the cylindrical plate. So, if it is a cylindrical curvature, the bilge plate, it is not a big problem simple plate rolling, you get it very fast. Only thing, whatever is the bilge radius, to achieve that bilge radius, you should have a rolling machine whose top rollers diameter is suitable. To achieve a 4 meter dia radius, uh, uh, dia curvature, some suitable curvature of this roller is needed. So, that is easy operation, there is no problem. The plate development is also not there because it is part of a cylindrical this thing. So, it can be easily you know <coughs> what size of plate that means the if this is my patch the blank is very easy to generate. Once you have a select angle, once the blank is there pass it through this you get that, but here it is little more complicated to get that right. You will have to apply that strain and then get the 3D patch. So, we will see how mechanically it is done and subsequently how thermally it is done. Okay.